Hello fellow AGD coders, welcome to another video and today we're going to be looking at importing graphic data from the ZX Paintbrush into AGDX and more specifically block data and also fonts. So uh, let's take a look at uh, something here. What I wanted to do was create a kind of intro screen and uh, this is mostly a demo though I may come and use it uh, in the future, we'll see. So let's take a quick look at the end result and uh, you can see here what uh, I've done. There you go. So we've got quite a nice graphic. We've got a little logo here and uh, we've also got a nice graphic there as well. And uh, all of this was imported and uh, drawn in uh, ZX Paintbrush, although actually the Pac-Man was, uh, wasn't drawn by me. I took it from another game, but uh, anyway, we won't tell anyone, will we? So, <laughs> okay, so let's move on and uh, take a look at how we do it. So obviously we start by going over to uh, ZX Paintbrush and um, we'll, uh, we'll then look at how we export it. It's really quite straightforward. So here is ZX Paintbrush and as you can see here is the two uh, graphics that I want to export first of all. So the first thing we'll do here, let's take a look. You can see there that I've designed it in such a way that it fits into the attribute blocks and that's a important obviously because you don't want to use up more memory than you need to so try to compress it within these uh, border guidelines here okay so the next thing that we want to do then is uh, we'll just hang on, switch that off yeah select this up here this is the 8 pixel selector and uh, we're going to take this logo first we'll take this pac-man here and we'll highlight it now the size of this is uh, 12 characters by 2 so it's 24 characters and we'll go to export file selection and uh, we'll choose binary file here and I've done it once already we'll choose pack logo here and uh, obviously as I said I've done it before now we want to switch off attributes in this case because I'm not going to in import the color because it's single color and I don't need to we're going to choose block based output and 8x8 so um, yeah, that's basically it. So we press OK, just like that, and we've now exported that. So I'm now going to do the same thing for this uh, little graphic. And this one is uh, 6 by 6, I think. And uh, yep, so what we'll do is with this one, we're going to, same thing again, uh, but this time we are going to also include the colors. So uh, again, binary file, and we go to this time we'll save it as Pac-Man front. Obviously yours will be a different size or different amounts. And then we'll include attributes here and we'll choose first all pixels followed by all attributes and press OK. All right, so that's all the data now done and uh, completed. So that is now uh, ready to be imported. So let's look first of all at how we could import these graphics into a font. Um, I know that I've got 24 blocks so what I'll do is I will use um, 24 characters in the lower case here. Imagine that we're not going to use the upper case and we'll just import them here into the lowercase address. And you can see the address there is 31752. So we'll open this and this is in Fuse. We'll choose all files and you can see there pack logo bin and we'll import it into 31752 just like that. OK, press OK. And there you go. The data is in there and it has been imported. So all we have to do then is create uh, two messages and uh, we'll then display them. Now, one of the big advantages of this, of course, is that uh, ZX Paintbrush supports import from a lot of different formats. You can import them from, from GIF, from JPEG, from all of the different formats. And so that really helps in terms of importing graphics. You can easily get stuff into AGD by doing it that way. So let's take a look here. Then we're just going to basically create two messages, one at column 10, line 5, column 10, one at line 6, column 10. Like that, message 1, message 2. And obviously we need to create the messages. So here we'll create a new message. And here we'll put the first 12 characters. So that will take us up to uh, M. Or is it L? Yeah, it'd be L, won't it? Okay, good. 
and then we'll create a second one and this will be m to x i think yeah that will be 12. okay good so now if we press uh, if we go to the uh, intro menu we also want to put in a color so we'll put color 70 that will be bright six and run it and there you go it's that simple uh, i've taken that from uh, from ZX Paintbrush and I've imported it and obviously the other advantage of using ZX Paintbrush is that you can of course draw on a much larger canvas than you can within AGD so it's very straightforward it does take up quite a few characters but it's nice and simple and of course now with the with the memory options we have for um, importing code we don't need to put code in there so we could use that quite happily for our logo there and um, just to show you for example here if we want to change the color change the color here with one color and it's easy enough to change it there and of course you could have uh, more than one color perhaps bars of color if you wanted to with your logo for your game so that's a nice easy way and it doesn't take up a lot of memory so um, especially if you don't have any code in the uh, in the character set so that's easy now let's look at importing blocks now I want to show you a way here of importing blocks rather than starting from zero but from any position because you've probably already got blocks in your game so we'll start here from block 20 and we know that we need to create 36 blocks here so I'll basically create 40 just to to be on the safe side there we go and uh, so I know now that I'll be able to import the data okay so importing the pixel data is very very straightforward it's almost identical to what we just did with the um, font so we basically go to the uh, file menu, go to load, choose the uh, logo, and here we go. And we're going to obviously load it in at this address, 37528. But this number here also includes the attribute data. So we know the number of blocks is 36. So we need to, so that means we've got 36 bytes of attribute data. So from our total, we subtract the number of blocks. Now, of course, for you, this might be a different number, but that's the number we want, 288. All right, so 288 is the actual number we want to import. So this means we're going to import the pixel data only because the pixel data comes first, then the attribute data comes afterwards. So if we import this now into address 37528, then that should be it it's imported and as you can see there we've got all our pixel data so if that's all you want if you've only got a few blocks you can color them yourself of course if you want to but um, I'm now going to show you a pretty easy way of in importing attributes so you remember this number 288 so what we're going to do is we're going to load it in to memory so that we only load in the attributes so we're going to load it in at 16384, that's the top of the screen address, that's the very top of the RAM there, the bottom of the RAM I should say, and we'll take two, 288 off and so it will be 16096. So when we load the binary data in now, the pixel data will be loaded into ROM, which means it won't be loaded, and the attribute data, which is just our 36 bytes, will be loaded into the very um, the very bottom of the uh, screen memory here so you'll see it appear on the screen as a few dots and pixels so we'll load it at 16096 that's 16384 minus 288 and we'll load it in full 324 the whole thing and what that means is now we've got 36 bytes at the very top of screen memory there and those 36 bytes are our attributes and uh, so all we need to do now is to basically save that from uh, from that address we'll do that now so we'll go to save binary data here and again I've done this once before so we'll save it as pack attributes and now we save it from 16384 that's the top of the address that's the screen top of the screen there and 36 bytes okay so now we've got a, a binary file which contains our 36 attributes and all we have to do then is go load binary data one more time and this time load it in at the address given here attrib 37876 so we load it in there 37876 just like that 
and there you go and as you can see we've got all of the colors in the correct places so as long as you follow those steps it's really quite straightforward and quite easy to basically get the uh, pixel data and the attribute data in and so just to show you that it's worked uh, if you want to if you wanted to use this for drawing something in a, in in a level and you wanted the blocks then you can basically see here you can draw it across and I'm just testing it just to prove that it actually works and there you can see with no problems at all that it's um, it, oh, I'm able to put it directly onto any screen so you could use it if you wanted to draw a building or a, you know a tree or something like this something that you, perhaps needs more space than you normally would have on a screen so you can draw it more accurately and clearly using uh, ZX paintbrush and then of course you know you can tweak it and uh, you can move about and you can remove some blocks and do whatever you like so there you go as you can see the it's uh, it's imported with no problems and if I go into the game there it is and it appears but obviously we don't really want it on the game screen that one we want it on the intro screen so um, let's take a look at a simple way of displaying uh, something like that using put block so here's the code as you can see I've got uh, the start there which is showing the the Pac-Man logo the messages and then directly below that you can see here we've got let rand equal 20 and that is our first block and then let opt equal 9 these are just temporary variables for the intro and 9 is uh, basically the line number that we want this to print at and because we've got uh, six rows we're going to do basically six sets of put block uh, we can't do a nested loop so we're just going to do one single loop with six blocks being printed and uh, what we're doing here is we're starting with block put block rand which starts at 20 and then it goes to 21 22 23 24 25 and then once it's printed the 25th one here we add one more to rand and then we add one more to opt which basically means go back to the next line and when it repeats it will then go back to column 13 as you can see here and then it will repeat it again but now it will be for uh, block 26 27 28 and then it will repeat again and it will do that six times and that will give us our six lines so you can see here when I run it there you go hey presto and there's our uh, Pac-Man character quite happily on screen there and that's really all there is to it it's as simple as that uh, you can do it really within only a few minutes it's 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 straightforward isn't it okay so let's just look one at uh, one more option here that you can do um, if you want to to have a logo or a graphic let's say over here somewhere or down here in this part if you print from the uh, event menu on the restart screen the, you can print off the game menu and that part will remain on screen when the game starts so if I go in here and as you can see I've set it up the same code and what I've got what I've got here now of course is column is now uh, 24 so line is 10 and column is 24 so it's over on the right hand side just like that and uh, what this will mean in game here it's going to be just about somewhere around here so this part of the screen you can print on if you print on the part where the checkerboard is the uh, game will load over the top of it but if you print on the part where it's blue as you can see it will work so if you want a little logo I had one like that in uh, my uh, Terrapins game which was which was done by Craig Howard the graphics and uh, if you want to do something like that it does add a little bit of panache a little bit of professionalism maybe something that looks quite nice on a game when you got a little bit of uh, spare screen space that you want to use up so you could have a nice little logo or something like that you may remember I think Bomb Jack had a had a really nice little graphic of the of the character so something like that really nice doesn't take up a lot of memory really if you've got it spare then it's definitely worth doing so uh, yeah I think that's pretty much it and I uh, hope you found that useful and uh, if you did and if you use it then please join us on the Facebook page AGDX user group um, something that I really enjoy is seeing when people have actually uh, maybe seen a video taken on board what I've uh, what I've shown and and used it to create their own logos and uh, and and perhaps uh, added a little extra something to their games it really uh, really helps me really really encourages me to make more videos to know that uh, what I'm doing is uh, is useful all right so as always like and subscribe 
and uh, I will see you in the next video. And as always, happy coding. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.